At T-Mobile, we're declaring the end of data limits. Introducing T-Mobile One. One price, all unlimited, for everyone. That's right. Get unlimited 4G LTE data on your smartphone, on our network that was built to handle it. And get it at a price that won't break the bank. With four lines of unlimited LTE data for just $35 a line per month with AutoPay. Switch today. Top 3% of data users greater than 26 gigabytes per month may see reduced speeds until next bill cycle. Video typically streams at 480p with qualifying credit discount via bill credit plus taxes and fees. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Irene Blog Talk Radio Show with your host and creator, Minister Annie Bell, the founder and executive director of Wealth Management Ministries Incorporated. We are providing talk therapy to survivors of child abuse, sex trafficking, and other traumas. Please enjoy the show. Well, hello again, everybody. Thank you again for um, spending your time with us here at Irene Blog Talk Radio Show. We thank you so much for joining um, us tonight, my friends. I am Minister Annie Bell, the host and creator of Irene Blog Talk Radio Show, which is an outreach of Wealth Management Ministries Incorporated. We are endeavoring to bring talk therapy to survivors of child abuse, sex trafficking, and other traumas as well as providing awareness and resources to prevent those atrocities within the community. Well, the topic of tonight's show, what love got to do with it? Um, Tina Turner was the first one that I heard who asked that question and uh, some years ago. And if the pornography industry were to answer that question, they would probably say nothing. Um, that love has nothing to do with it. But, um, you know, pornography has skewed our society's perception of what a relationship is made of and supposed to be filled with. It's It's more about the male receiving sexual pleasure and less about love and reciprocal acts of consenting sensual relationships. Um, now, <clears throat> I was doing some reading, and uh, this article you can actually find on my Facebook page, I Reign, Stop Abuse and Abolish Sex Trafficking, if you want to read uh, this article. But the director of a domestic violence center of the Gold Coast says, in the past few years, we have had a huge increase in intimate partner rate of women from, four, uh, from ages 14 to 80. That's eight zero people. The biggest common denominator in consumption of porn by the offender. That's the biggest common denominator. With uh, offenders not able to differentiate between fantasy and reality. Uh, Believing women are quote unquote up for it 24 seven. Ascribing to the myth that no means yes and that yes means anal. Oblivious to injuries, caused, and never, ever considering consent, we have seen a huge increase in deprivation of liberty, physical injuries, torture, drugging, filming, and sharing footage without consent. Now, um, a 2012 review of a research on the impact of Internet pornography on adolescents. Now, this, this part is really sad to me because, it, again, it is hitting our next generation. But it's, it's, it was found that adolescent consumption of internet porn was linked to attitudinal changes, including acceptance of male dominance and female submission as the primary sexual paradigm, with women viewed as sexual playthings eager to fulfill male sexual desires. The authors 
found that adolescents who were intentionally exposed to violent sexual, ex sexually explicit material, material were six times more likely to be sexually aggressive than those who were not exposed. Now, the proliferation and the globalization of hypersexualized imagery and porno pornographic themes makes healthy sexual exploration more impossible. It's almost impossible. Sexual conquest and domination are untempered by the bounds of respect, intimacy, and authentic human connection. Young people are not learning about intimacy, friendship, and love, but about cruelty and humiliation. As a recent study found, online mainstream pornography overwhelmingly centered on acts of violence and degradation toward women. The sexual behaviors exemplified in pornography skewed away from intimacy and tenderness and typify patriarchal constructions of masculinity and femininity. So, uh, and that's unquote. So when, when I read that, it truly does make me see what is happening in our society today um, with the increase of child sexual abuse, um, increase of domestic violence and rape. It just, the, the, the pornographic industry is um, perpetuating what is happening. Uh, and there, there we, have to, we have to get a gauge on that and somehow uh, stop it, especially as it gets to our young people. I know that in school, there's a federal law now that says that in elementary school that we have to begin teaching about uh, sexual behaviors and sexual, um, I guess, uh, you know, what desires of people. Uh, but I'm not ready for my children to learn about that. I'm not ready for them to uh, learn about anal sex and, um, you know, domineering sex. I, I just, I'm not ready. My, my children are 6 and 11, and I want to be the one who says when they are ready and not politics, not people in, you know, um, in, the, in the government. So, but anyway, that's my little soapbox. Um, that was some deep stuff that we just, that, we, that I just read. And uh, I, I hope that it, uh, it impacted you and really piqued your ear. Tonight, I have a guest who is in our virtual studio all the way from Brisbane, Australia, to talk to us about the effects of pornography. Peter Fatoina, welcome to the show. Hi there, Annie. Um, greetings to everyone. Um, it's an honor to be on the show and, and, and to share my story, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Well, I thank you for having the courage to, um, first of all, to come out and talk about it, and secondly, to even have the, um, you know, the, the, the wherewithal to know how this is impacting our society. But, you know, I always want our, our listeners to get to know our guests a little bit, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm currently living in uh, Brisbane, Australia. Um, I was uh, born in New Zealand. I have, uh, I'm of uh, Samoan heritage, so both my parents are Samoan. Um, I work as a laborer part-time, uh, warehousing, and just um, outdoor work, landscaping. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, raised up in a, in a good Christian home, a uh, good family, and... Um, yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, you are, you know, when you say like Brisbane, Australia, and New Zealand, New Zealand, and you're saying it like it's no big deal, but you know that's on my bucket list of places I want to travel to. Um, <laughs> you ha you are living in paradise as far as I am. Um, you know, I can see. So welcome, welcome to, um, you know, welcome to the show, and I appreciate um, that. Let's go right into the conversation, our discussion. Um, if you could share with us your experience with pornography. Okay, my, my experience with pornography, it came into to my life about the age of 12 um, in, the, in the form of material. Where it was a magazine. Uh, it was introduced. It was in my household at the time. So 
at the age of 12, I had access to pornographic material. Now, what happened was, over time, again, I go back to, I was raised in a good Christian home. But um, over time, pornography was starting to teach me things that, you know, went against my beliefs and, and how you would normally treat uh, yeah, another human being. So pornography had a big influence on my life when I was young, even up until today. It had a big impact up on my life. Wow. And um, what type of impact did it have on your life? Uh, it, what it did was it, it distorted my view of a woman mm-hmm. um, and you know my sisters in Christ. It just it pretty much um, hijacked my brain to the point where if I looked at a woman, um, pornography taught me to look at a woman and, and look in, look at them as an object, you know, yeah. just body parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not as a person, but yeah, and that and that's how um, porno- pornography has influenced my my brain over time. And you know, I'm glad you said that because what was some of the uh, teenage girls that were interviewed uh, at age 15 when um, they asked how was the their first sexual encounter. And one of the girls said, well, I think he, I think he enjoyed my body. And that is so absolutely sad to me because we, you know, young girls should feel there should be value attached to her far more than, um, you know, that what the pornography industry wants to do. And the fact that it is going into our uh, our children's eye duct and ear duct, and and they're learning love or the or sex, excuse me, not love, um, sex from that. I think is is so sad. I wanted to to, um, to also share with the listeners that the study by the Barna Group showed that 64 percent of Christian men. And 15% of Christian women admitted to viewing pornography at least once a month. Now, that that uh, is astonishing in and of itself. But when they compared it to non-Christians, okay, it's 65% of men and 30% of women. So, uh, you know, in the in the Christian community, what I'm what what this. Uh, survey is telling me is that it's about the same um you know there's yeah there is a huge there's a bigger gap between the women you know but other than that i mean there's only a a one percent difference for the men and so for you to say that you know you were in a good christian home um you know it's 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 bringing this particular statistic uh, you know, to reality, that 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 is a, that is a true statement. Um, now, again, I, I do want to um, I want to commend you, Peter, because not only not only for the fact that you have uh, broken away from the addiction and allowed Christ to come in and uh, cleanse you and um, transform your mind, but the fact that you are a man and you're coming out to say, okay, this is wrong. Um, I think it speaks volumes about your character and about, about Christ in you. So I do want to commend you uh, again, and I'll probably do that throughout the show because I, I just think it's excellent. And I, and I pray that more men would do that. Um, if, if, you know, they don't have to go on the radio, but to, to definitely uh, stop, you know, cease and desist. Uh, what they're doing, because again, it is uh, continually perpetuating what we see going on in our society today. Um, Now, you know, we're almost close to a break. So before we take our first break, what I do, uh, when we come back, I am going to ask you, did you notice that you had unrealistic sexual expectations from the women you dated because of what you saw on those pornographic videos? So, everybody, if you'll just stay tuned, 
Um, we'll be right back with Peter Fatona um, and in just about two minutes. Thank you so much. Sadly, today, most of us know at least one person that suffers from addiction or substance abuse. Addiction does not discriminate. No age, gender, race, or classes of people are immune to the horrors of addiction. This epidemic has ruined families, claimed lives, and left loved ones devastated. Over 100 people die from overdoses daily, and over 20 million Americans suffer from some form of addiction. For this reason, author Lloyd H. Bell Jr. has written the book Clean and Serene. The author is an addictions counselor and recovering addict of over 13 years. He knows and has first-hand experience of being caught in the grips of addiction. Clean and Serene provides experience, strength, and hope for the still-suffering addict. It can also be used as a tool in recovery. Whether it is used in a group setting or individually, this book was written to assist in the recovery process and encourage. Integrating inspirational, encouraging, and challenging scriptures the author has provided a resource that is sure to change lives. If you or someone you know is battling with addiction, this book is for you. If you are in recovery, this is a great resource to add to your toolbox. If you are a group leader or addiction counselor, this is an awesome book for group therapy. Clean and Serene. Scriptural Meditations for Recovery is available nationwide in both ebook and print. Get your copy or a copy for some you know today from Amazon or Barnes & Noble Bookstore. For less than $10, you can potentially change the life of someone currently paying the high cost of living. Welcome back to I Rain Blog Talk Radio Show with your host, Minister Annie Bear. Well, well, welcome back. I appreciate you guys staying put and um, and allowing us to continue to share. Before um, we begin, I just wanted to go ahead and ask, and, and well, not ask, but to invite you all uh, who are interested in sponsoring our show or advertising on our show to contact our marketing department, 201-477-0469. Um, whatever show we do, your advertising actually is archived with the show. So you pay one time, but your your uh, advertising will continue going on and on and on for years and years to come. Again, welcome back to Irene Blog Talk Radio Show and it's powered by We Inspire Network Radio. Tonight I have, again, all the way from Brisbane, Australia, Peter Fatoina, who is um, sharing with us his experience in um, being addicted to pornography. The question that I had left with, uh, and Peter, is that did you notice that you had unrealistic sexual expectations from the women you dated because of what you saw on the pornographic videos. Yeah. Um, be- before I answer that question, I just want to um, give a definition of pornography because um, maybe some people do or don't know. But uh, pornography is the depiction of erotic behavior, as in pictures or writing intended to cause sexual excitement. It's the depiction of acts in a sensational manner so as to arouse a quick, intense emotional reaction. Now, if we go off that definition, just to be clear, uh, where do we see these things? In society, in the world today, on your TV screen, on your movie, uh, the movies that you watch, uh, the music videos, Instagram, social media, Facebook, on all different platforms, you see a version of pornography you know, being projected, and as we talked about, to our youth, the, the statistics are there to show that uh, they are heavily uh, influenced by it, and, and pornography does not know any age group. So you got stats out there saying that uh, young children are exposed to pornography. Uh, it can be from the age of six, the age of 12 onwards. Mm. Um, so pornography is, is a really uh, big issue. Um, in today's society and the world that we live in today, not just with um, everyday people, with, with Christians also, 
but then someone might ask the question then, how is pornography addictive when it's not a drug? Mm. Um, thinking that thinking that because we do not inhale pornography or we do not inject pornography, therefore it cannot be a drug, so it can't be addictive. Now, if we define our terms by what the word addiction means, by the American Society of Addiction Medicine, what they say is addiction is a chronic disease of the brain. The brain contains and creates millions of neurocircuits that are for memory and rewarding behaviors. Addictions are dysfunctions in the circuits where a person is pathologically pursuing neurological rewards. Yeah. And then they go on to say, just to clarify and to add to that, they say it's no longer just about substance addictions anymore, the things that you can inject or inhale, but they have also added to it behavioral addictions. The reason being is because certain behavior can impact your neurocircuits just like substances can. Yeah. And the evidence is there if, if you um, take a person's brain who is addicted to, say, cocaine, and you hook it up to a brain scan, what you will find is there's a shrinkage in the area, area of the brain, the, you know, where, where your impulses, your prefrontal lobe, mm -hmm. where your impulses are supposed, are supposed to kick in. And um, there's, a, there's a decrease there and there's a shrinkage there. So normally what would happen when you have these uncontrollable cravings is these impulse pulses are probably are supposed to kick in the brakes, right? Right. The problem is over time and, and because of this behavior addiction, um, it becomes weak. So the body be now starts to begin to gear itself up to, to where you have that experience where it's like a, a got to have it, you know, feeling, which is um, to do with. Uh, so what is happening now is what they found is um, behavior addiction. It can be the same thing as excessive use of the internet, whether it be gaming or gambling, even pornography. Mm -hmm. Over time, as, as these behaviors, we hardwire into our brain. So the person has similar sensations to a person who was addicted to that external drug, whether it be meth or alcohol. Wow. So behavior, behaviors like pornography is tapping into that same neuro circuits. Wow. And that's how pornography becomes addictive. And that makes sense because um, in my book, Irene, A Survivor's Guide to Thrive, um, I talk about me being addicted to shopping at one point uh -huh. um, and, and yeah. that, that addictive behavior in, in my trying to cope with what was going on to me, going on with me with the uh, sexual abuse as a child and trying to cope with the memories and, and all that was going on, I turned to shopping and it gave me the relief, the release, and I felt in control. It went from buying a blouse every once in a while to purchasing entire wardrobes every couple of months. Um, uh, then I started purchasing cars, you know, high tag items. I had, I got a new car every year. Um, and I talk about how I got upside yeah. down in that because I was, um, you know, obviously, you know how the car industry is. And so um, definitely relating to that. Thank you for sharing that. It was some good information. Oh, well, I see. I, I think is the general idea out there is because pornography is not a drug, it, it cannot be addicted. So if you, if you do your, if you have a look, you know, they've come out to say, look, it's a behavior addiction. Yeah. So exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. It does. So yeah. with that said, did you notice some unrealistic um, sexual expectations from the women that you dated um, because of what you saw on the, um, the you know, pornographic videos? Uh, sure, definitely. Um, when you're reading, when you're reading pornography, it gives you a distorted image of what love is. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what I was being taught from a young age. So um, I was being taught, look, a woman is meant to be treated in this way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can call her certain names, and it's 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 okay. You can, 
and and then when it came into relationships that I have, um, I felt that I was encouraging these types of behavior because of the influence pornography had on my brain. Exactly. So, um, as much as, like I say, you know, I I was raised up in a Christian um, environment or an upbringing. Um, pornography was was telling me to um, act out these behaviors on these women, mm-hmm. and it's 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 okay, you know, they they they're gonna be okay with it, and and that was my uh, reality. It was a fantasy world. Yeah. And um, of course, of course, you when, when you're looking at porn, porn, pornography and you're seeing one thing, and then you're in a relationship and it's another thing. Well, then you know that's it starts to create problems in that relationship where that person. And if you're viewing pornography, um, the message is: look, if you're in pornography, what you're saying to your partner is she, he, or she is not enough. Mm, wow. You you have to um, go that extra. You know, um, a mile just to satisfy your needs, and, and that's the that's one of the problems that pornography uh, does to a person's brain is, um, you know, with that dopamine effect, they gotta have a feeling. Um, in order to go back to that feeling, you know, a person will either go to hardcore pornography, or or, or they will end up, and the stats are there, they will end up. Um, uh, Paying for, for prostitution for prostitutes. Yes, that's the reality. Again, perpetuating the very things that we are trying yeah. to uh, prevent in this society. Um, you know, with like you're saying, with the pro- proliferation of pornography, it's I mean, it's being available at the fingertips of our youngest children, and um, it makes the female. You know, the girls or the women, they learn that they are a sort of service station for male gratification and pleasure. And, um, you know, we have just come to an age where it's all right for women to also enjoy, you know, the understanding that it's all right for women to enjoy sex, pure, um, loving sex that God has created. And, um, but, Pornography has dirtied it, you know, and um, make women even look like, you know, uh, the word whore and, you know, the other B words that are being used. And uh, like you said, just real degradation and uh, humiliation. And um, I actually, during, you know, in my in my college years, uh, had learned about some of the the different uh, uh, sexual, not just addictions, but preferences. And uh, in Japan, you know, they have all kinds of, of, you know, humiliating acts that they they show. And, And they are played out on these pornographic videos, whether it's fisting, whether it's, um, uh, a group of men ejaculating over a woman, you know, one woman in the center. It is just, again, we as women are um, just, you know, seen in, in such a dishonorable and uh, degrading way. Uh, did pornography make you start objectifying women? I know you made mention to that earlier. Um, did it make you start object, objectifying women, and, and how? Uh, sure. Um, yes, definitely. Um, and, and like I said, you know, pornography was influencing my brain that this is how women were meant to be treated. Mm. Um, and in my my mindset is, look, well, I have to have it my way, or it's not going to work out. And it, it led to me, um, uh, you know, doing things with, with my, in my relationships where um, exactly what you see on those videos, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different genres, as you mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. there's um, where it's, you know, it's filmed pretty much everywhere and 
and that's what it does. Look, it promotes a, a, a promiscuous, you know, lifestyle where if you want to have sex, you know, and you and you want it, you, you got to have it then. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it can it can be done outdoors, you know, anywhere. But you know, you just got to have it, and and uh, the person that you're with, or the you know, the woman that you're with, um, had all given to those uh, because you know they they their feelings, uh, their emotions are that they love you. But for you, when you're influenced by pornography, it distorts what love is. And again, going back, um, sex was made for marriage. It was yeah. by God. That's right. Um, it was. Outside of that, that's where it becomes distorted, and 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 we begin to have all these problems that we are now facing. But um, I own up to uh, those situations and, and what I did, and when I was influenced on pornography, um, I wasn't a good person. I admit to that. But um, yes, I did objectify women, and I wish, you know, going back, that I I, I never. I laid eyes on pornography. Well, the, the, what I love about the Lord is that when you say, forgive me, God, it is done. And he doesn't, he no longer remembers. Amen. Sin. And, um, Amen. and I pray that you will too soon uh, forgive yourself because uh, you are a new person. You have transformed and you are out here now talking about it to help others and to um, stop it. It is time for our, our next uh, commercial break. When we come back, I, I want to talk a little bit further about how uh, pornography, you know, altered your perception of love and marriage. So everybody, keep your um, keep yourself in the seat. We'll be right back in about two minutes. Hello, everybody. My name is Minister Annie Bell, and I am the host of I Reign Blog Talk Radio Show where we endeavor to bring talk therapy to survivors of child abuse, sex trafficking, and other traumas, as well as being the vehicle by which we use to bring awareness and resources to the community to aid in the prevention of these abuses. I RAIN, which is a declarative acronym for the individual survivor that means I, I identify myself as a survivor, no longer a victim. R, reclaim my life. E, excel at living. G, grow in Christ. And N, nurture myself and others. This declarative acronym has developed into a victorious lifestyle brand that empowers and aids in the healing journey of survivors of abuse, sex trafficking, and other traumas. I have also written a book entitled, with the namesake, I Reign, A Survivor's Guide to Thrive, which is now available at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. Pick up your copy of my book today and join me every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. here on We Inspire Network Radio, where together, through God, we win. If we endure, we will reign with Christ. Welcome back to I Reign Blog Talk Radio Show with your host, Minister Annie Bell. Hey, 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 for those who are just joining us, you have tuned in to I Reign Blog Talk Radio Show, powered by We Inspire Network Radio. I am your host, Minister Annie Bell, and uh, we are one of the many outreaches of Wealth Management Ministries Incorporated, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization where we endeavor to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor through the teaching of financial literacy and Christian counseling. We are back with my special guest all the way from Brisbane, Australia, um, in the virtual studio with us, Peter Batuena. Um, Welcome back, Peter. Thanks for having me, Annie. And you're welcome. 
um, before the break, we were talking about uh, how then does this uh, pornography, how did it alter your perception of love and marriage for you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, what it did was um, it damaged the idea of, of, of love and int- intimacy. Um, going back to what I said, you know, um, that intimacy or, or or sex was meant to be within a marriage. It's it's sacred, you know, yeah. to God. Now, what pornography was telling me is it's not sacred. Um, you can pretty much have it and do it whatever you want and whatever time you want. And with, uh, you know, you're in the relationship that you're in. So it, it, it definitely distorted my um, understanding of what a relationship was meant to be and what love was meant to be. And well, over time, you know, it, it, it can reduce your chance of finding or wanting what real love is. Hmm. Wow. That's profound. Um, you know, I, uh, many of y'all know that prior to my coming to the Lord, um, I, I wasn't saved all my life. I um, was married two times prior to, um, you know, to my husband now. Um, we've been married now for almost uh, thir- going on 13 years, 12 or 13 years. Uh, look, I'm trying to count on my fingers, but um, but before then, you know, I was married to one gentleman. Well, not a gentleman. He was um, not a gentleman, <laughs> and he introduced pornography into our marriage, um, and he was demanding the things that he, you know, in reenactment of the things that he saw on uh, TV, you know, when uh, the videos, and um, he was also wanting to invite other people in because obviously menage a trois and, you know, uh, trains and all that. You just see all of that going on on those um, pornography videos. And at, at one point I had to just draw the line and say, listen, this is not who I am. I don't want to watch these things. And he could not get aroused until he actually was watching a video, and it had gotten that bad to the point where it impacted our marriage in such a negative way that I no longer could be with him. Um, and so our marriage lasted maybe maybe nine months um, because I was not going to do the things that he, you know, wanted me to do. Now, other women have, you know, for whatever reason, may have. Uh, not left, and they probably are sometimes, there are probably some women right now who are in marriages where the husband is degrading them or humiliating them and making them try to reenact those uh, videos, and I just want to speak to that person right now that um, you are more than just a sex object or a tool or a service station uh, for male gratification. You do deserve to be loved and to be nurtured and honored by your husband or your, um, uh, the person that says they love you. And so we, as women, we're created to desire that from our husbands and from our, our mates. We desire that love and that, um, that type of attention and intimacy. And so, um, I just want to let you know that it's okay to desire that and to ask that, and then also, um, it is not perfect way for a marriage to have uh, pornography in it. And so, um, if you don't want to be in that type of relationship, then you do have the right to speak up and say that to your husband. And there are counseling, there's therapy, there are groups that are available to help that. I um, the next question that I have for you, uh, Peter, is uh, what made you finally stop watching pornography and speak out against that industry? Amen. Um, 
over time, as, 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 as I've been saying, the influence of pornography on my life left a destructive trail. And I thank you for being brave enough to share your story on, on your relationship or your marriage that you're in. Um, I was in a similar situation um, where uh, I was with someone. And I share this because I want people to take it seriously. Pornography, uh, it's an ep epidemic. It's a health crisis there in America, here here in Australia, and a place called Toowoomba. They're, they're looking to um, stomp it out, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of movements out there, um, anti-porn movements, um, Christian movements that uh, are working together to put the message out, look, pornography is a problem. And, and let's deal with this issue. Um, now, going back to what I was saying was, uh, I was in a relationship where I was with someone who was carrying my child. Um, and we had a, another child on the way. Um, pornography did not stop me from cheating on that person. That's the reality. Mm. In fact, pornography promotes all these things. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So... Again, um, that was a broken relationship where I own up to the things that I did um, and I allowed to, uh, pornography to have such an influence on my life that it distorted my view of what love was. Yeah. Um, what helped me to break out of that cycle was first and foremost, it was God. Amen. Um, that whole time I had the struggle with pornography um, I asked God to work in my life. There was times in my life where I said to God, God, if this is all that I am, you know, take this life away from me. Wow. You know, I didn't want to live anymore. Wow. So God, I know God heard me because, and whether we know it or not, you know, God has a divine plan for us. Yes, yes. And it's all, already in motion. So I was asking God, look, help me and put the right people in, in my path, you know, and just knowing the harmful effects. Look, pornography, a lot of people might think pornography only affects the viewer or it doesn't affect anyone at all. Now, if we look at the statistics, pornography is directly linked to human trafficking, sexual abuse, um, and, and these are some of the things that I had to uh, challenge myself to look at, you know, and see the statistics that it was doing a lot of damage worldwide. Wow. Wow. And, and you're exactly right. It perpetuates, you know, child, um, child sexual abuse, child exploitation, uh, prostitution, sex trafficking. It all is this big wad of perversion, you know, and um, we, we have to dissect it to be able to know uh, how to combat each genre of exploitation, um, just so that you know. And again, everybody know I'm a I'm a statistics type of person. Fifty six percent of divorce cases involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. Um, so it's you know we're not out here by ourselves uh, going through the effects of it. You know. Um, there are 56% of those who are, are divorced uh, going through this. And um, there is also, the, there's a, with prolonged exposure, it leads to um, the belief that promiscuity is a natural state, like you were saying. And cynicism about love or, or the need for the affection between partners, sexual partners. Um, because you don't see people cuddling and loving on each other after um, sex on, on, you know, a pornographic video. It's, it's more of the wham, bam, okay, I'm done, you get out of my face kind of thing. Um, that that mar the belief that marriage is sexually confining. And there's a lack of attraction to family um, and child raising. So, um, but yeah. it's a big business. You know, it's a, it's a huge business. So, um, so you know, we, we got to. There's so many a avenues where we have to attack this particular industry because it, globally it is a 20 billion dollar business. 
okay? And that's statistics from 2000, uh, 2011. Um, so, you know, you know there's more now. The, the only reason that it, if it does go down is because that pornography now is available for free on the Internet. There's a lot of Internet sites. And beware, those who have, you know, young kids, um, you know, my, my own daughter was a uh, victim where she was looking up something for school and she put in the wrong thing and um, what she she didn't know was wrong. She put in something and a, and a pornographic site came up. Even if you are looking up White House um, to do a report on the White House where our president of the United States lives, it is a pornographic site. Um, so you have to put in whitehouse.gov. Otherwise, you're going to get White House porn for you or whatever that is. <laughs> you know, so we got to be very, very careful. We are uh, in, up in the time for our last uh, break, our last uh, station identification. So we'll be right back in two minutes. Please stay seated. <laughs> Hello, my name is Minister Lloyd Bell Jr., CEO of We Inspire Network Radio. God bless you, and I am Minister Annie Bell, the COO of We Inspire Network Radio. We had you, our listeners, in mind when we created We Inspire Network Radio, or as we like to call it, Win Radio. We incorporated your thoughts and opinions to ensure that our programming will embody true inspiration. And we will continue to bring relevant and heartfelt shows that cater to the needs and wants of our growing listener base. Please, subscribe to our network so that you can stay connected. Join us here every week where together, through God, we win. Welcome back to I Rain Blog Talk Radio Show with your host, Minister Annie Bell. Thank you, thank you so much for staying with us. Welcome back. We are on our last quarter hour um, of our show, and I just want to thank you for staying put with us. Uh, it's, again, this is I Rain Blog Talk Radio Show, and I am Minister Annie Bell. I am aware and understand that this could be a trigger for some who have uh, survived um, the porn addiction, also those who have been victimized either by child exploitation, child abuse, or sex trafficking, this may be a trigger for you. If it is, please do not suffer by yourself. Uh, You can either call us, um, reach out to me on Facebook, inbox me. We have a, a prayer team also on Thursday night. Uh, at 9.30 Eastern Time, we have uh, Intercessory Prayer Warrior Forum where we get on the line and pray for whoever is on the line with us. Again, you can call us at 530-881-1212, access code 225-184-078. Our ministry line outside of that, um, if you need prayer, is 201-477-0469. And just ask for prayer that way. Um, if you missed any of those numbers, just look down in your screen. There should be a slideshow going on. Um, there is a prayer, uh, a JPEG with a, tra- a p- prayer information on there for you as well. Well, again, like I said, you're on our last quarter hour, and we're here uh, with Peter Fatoina, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Uh, not California, Australia. So I love technology and what it allows us to do. Uh, welcome back, Peter. I appreciate you being here with us. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, and I love the fact that you are here advocating for um, the the, um, the stopping of pornography and uh, advocating for those who are victims, whether they were victims as an an addict or victim. Of a, of a person that they love who who were who was an addict. What um, word of advice do you have for people who want to stop watching pornography but feel too trapped or too addicted uh, to to stop? 
Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I, I didn't mention before was um, as I was going through the struggle, um, what, what was happening was I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody about it. Mm. And so it, it became something that I had to hide, obviously, because it was sin or um, the type of behavior that is shameful. And I couldn't reach out to anybody, whether it be my family um, or with, even within a church group. You know, I didn't see an opportunity where I could. Um, so for these many years, I kept silent about it. But, you know, now um, there is a lot of groups out there that are able to help you. Um, there is movements like Fight the New Drug. Um Church groups out there, uh, movements, um, God over porn, uh, more than just a movement, it's a lifestyle, uh, blazing grace. You know, there, there is definitely a lot of help out there now with the help of social media um, and, and the internet. Uh, you can find help, but what I would suggest is, first of all, look, if you are really uh, struggling with pornography, and, and, and the word pornography, uh, struggle, it doesn't mean to give in. That's right. It means to violently resist. Wow, I love that. So, wow, I love that. So whether it be uh, sexual sin or pornography or whatever addiction you have, um, what I would recommend is get on your knees and, and ask God for help. And like I said, God's plan will be in motion from that point to bring into your life the right people, um, someone that... Even just having someone to talk to helps a lot. You know, I'm thankful that all over the world, um, I have people that I can speak to and have been encouraging and, and not judgmental. Um, there's a group that I fellowship with that do exactly that for me, you know. They're encouraging. They're, they're, they're being there in, in the point in my life where I really needed them, and, and praise God. You know, God can do the same thing for someone else. So if you're seeking help, um, all the groups that I didn't mention, uh, they have um, filters for the internet for your children. Um, and also, look, it helps just to talk to your children, you know, form that uh, relationship, that bond with them where they can talk to you about anything. Because the reality is we cannot stop it because, you know, it's seen on so many platforms. What we can do is we can raise awareness about it. Mm -hmm. and teach our to children to be able to come to us and talk to um, us about what they, someone might have shared because the, the statistics say that a lot of children are sharing pornography with other children. Yeah. yeah. What we need is for our children to come to us as parents or, or family members or whatever friends and, and, and talk to, have that one person who they can talk to and, and find encouragement in and it goes a long way. That's, that's really good advice, and I appreciate you um, sharing that. And there are so many avenues. I didn't know about all those um, groups uh, on, fa on Facebook and on the Internet. So that is, in and of itself is encouraging. The other thing, the fact that you can reach out to Christ, you know, it's not so shameful of a sin that you cannot turn to God um, for help. But he already knows what you're doing, you know. Um, so, uh, but he is the one. If if none of these other avenues work, he he God will, you know. Jesus will. Um, there's a song that says, "Try Christ." If you haven't, you've tried everything else. Try Christ. And um, and he'll make it better. And um, I love your message that, you know, yeah, there are things and there are groups and everything out there, but God works it out for you. And I think that is a powerful, powerful testament to um, what God can do. My husband is a recovering addict. He was a um, alcoholic and a uh, he was addicted to drugs as well. He is now uh, celebrating sobriety of over 13 years. He is now a drug addiction Christ counselor. God. Yes. And he is um, has a show out called Recovery Just for Today. 
And so uh, God did it for him, too. And so anyone out there listening, God can do it for you. No addiction is stronger than God, and um, and he loves you. So, you know, he's not, it's not too shameful of a sin that he will not hear your ask, your plea, your petition for forgiveness um, and, and, and make it better. And now, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to fool anybody. It's addiction, uh, recovering from addiction is different. It looks different for everyone. It may have been a quick one for this person, but the next person, they probably have to go through a process. And um, it's okay as long sure. as you are moving forward. Is that what you found as well, Peter? Did it did it, did your addiction stop immediately, or was it a process for you? It it, it was a process for me. Um, exactly what you said. Look, it, it, like I said, going back, it was when I was twelve years old. Yeah. So now I, I I'm twenty nine right now. You know, it was with me for almost seven years, and and only through Christ was I able to finally give it up. You know, Christ met me at my brokenness and, and the state that I was in. And he, ta- and he said to me, look, no matter how you feel about yourself, I love you. I want to form a real relationship with you, a relationship that will surpass anything that you have ever experienced. I have something better to offer you. And when I finally understood that, you know, what the gospel was sharing and was teaching to me, I could only you know, um, come to Christ as I was and allow him to change my heart. Yeah. And in saying that, look, um, you know, when, we, when we're talking about how triggers, when I was talking about, you know, cheating and, and, and doing all these things, I was not glorifying um, myself or my actions. And I do apologize to anyone that might be listening. You know, they might be in a relationship where their partner views pornography or their partner is cheating on them. Um, That was not my intention. My intention was that change can happen only through Christ. Christ can change our hearts and our minds and renew us. And and that's exactly what, what what the Bible, you know, talks about how we have a carnal mind. Mm -hmm. And we have these fleshly desires. Uh, you find it in, in, in Romans 8, verse 6 and 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So what we need to be is spiritually minded. We need to have the mind of Christ, the indwelling spirit in our lives. Because just like Galatians says, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Mm. It is no longer I who live but Christ that lives within me. Amen. Yes. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. The difference maker is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is what can change your heart. He not only died for us on the cross, and in order for that to happen, a divine life had to be a sacrifice and atonement for our sins. So now we have access to that same life because when Christ says, you know, you're crucified with me, you are no longer living, but it's I that live with you. Christ is what makes the difference when he lives inside us through his spirit. And that's how we are able to walk accordingly to God's word. Amen. And those are great scriptural words. And I know that you have touched someone tonight. Um, I know that. Uh, bondages were broken, and we're going to continue to pray that the spirit of perversion and um, wickedness that are that sits in high places, um, spiritual wickedness, we're going to pray and, and ask for God to rebuke and bring down those strongholds um, that continue to uh, plague our society um, and, and, and infiltrate our family. What are some of your future endeavors that you would like to share with our audience this evening. We have about 30 seconds. Future endeavors, okay. Um, I have a project at the moment um, because one of the things you need to know that if you want to quit pornography, you have to divert your attention um, away from what you were normally doing, your your behavior, addiction that you have, you have to create, you know, new pathways and and new behavior 
which is takes you away from a situation. Could be going going to the gym, um, spending time talking to someone. Um, what I'm doing right now is I have a project in my community where I just go out and I meet people, get to know my neighbours, um, have a conversation with them, and if the opportunity is there, present to them, you know, Christ as the Son of God and the Gospel. And wherever God leads me from here, I will follow. And I believe that God has. Um, his divine plan in place where I was talking to someone else too uh, recently about um, joining a part of his ministry and sharing the message of the harmful effects of pornography. Um, I'm wanting to do whatever it is to raise awareness and to tell people not only pornography is harmful, but human trafficking, you know, child abuse or child trafficking and and all these things that are directly linked. Um, I want to be able to be a part of this movement and and make it a lifestyle, make it practical. Amen. I appreciate all that you've done coming on the show and doing what you're doing in our community. Please keep it up. If you're ever in the United States, look me up. Let's have lunch and break bread. I'm proud of what you're doing. Continue to do it. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Always. Thank you for the opportunity and praise God. You're welcome. Well, my wisdom to reign, we're coming to that segment, Um, and I just wanted to quote Apostle Lena Mars Opoku, who said, the sky is not the limit, it's actually your starting point. So, to make a donation or to get in touch with me or my team, please go to www.wealthmngt.org or anniebellministries.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at iRain, Stop Abuse and Abolish Sex Trafficking. Um, Also, you can go to YouTube channel. I reign, blog talk, and become a subscriber so that you will not miss any shows. Go and pick up my book, Amazon.com, also at Barnes & Noble. Go pick up my book and begin your healing today. Repeat after me. I reclaim my life. I excel at living. I illuminate the dark. I grow in Christ, and I nurture myself and others. Thank you for being with us tonight. Let's reign together with Christ. See you next Tuesday at 8 p.m.